Well, hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Ladies Listen Up. What is your relationship with your money? Wow. Before we get started, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Share this information with somebody else. Yes, it's time to go grab your sister girl, nudge her, and say, come on over. Let's see what we can learn about our money today. Well, all right. I trust and believe everybody is doing well today. Hmm. Tea. It's tea time, right? Hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, when it's mango, I need two sips, right? Hmm. Just to get us going and get us started. So, without further ado, let's go on over to Grandma's Cookie Jar and let's see what Grandma's Cookie Jar has in store for us today. Your greatness is not what you have, it's what you give. Hmm. And when we're talking about our money, that's definitely, it definitely goes into our topic for today. And today we're going to talk about how to increase annual income, right? That's one of the number one objectives of Americans is to increase our income and to build for retirement, all right? I was in a meeting one uh, the other day, and one of my mentors, Dr. George Frazier, he gave some wonderful, wonderful tips that I'm going to pass on to you today about how to increase our annual income. I think it's something that, you know, that is kind of playing subliminally in our minds, but it's not something that we really give it a lot of attention or probably not as much attention as we should give it, right? So I'm going to talk a little bit about the it's not what you have, it's what you give. And it's what you give to your planning because that is the biggest thing, you know, giving it focus, giving it attention, giving it energy, right? And big things often have small beginnings. That really, really ties into how to increase our annual income because there are a couple of tips that can help us to do that. And there's some of the things, again, like I said, I think it's some things that we just don't even think about. We don't, it's not in our forefront, forefront of our mind, you know, or it's not in our actual plan when we sit down and write it out in our reference notebooks, right? So one of the movies, and if ever, anybody know me, they know I'm a big movie buff, right? I love to make parables with movies. And I said, well, why not incorporate some of that into some of our lessons that we're learning in some of our conversations in, you know, what is your relationship with your money? There was a 2005 movie with Jim Carrey and T. Leone, Leone, I believe is her name. It was fun with Dick and Jane. It was a hilarious, hilarious movie because we all know anything with Jim Carrey, this guy, you know, he's twisting all around and his animated facial expressions and everything just get us going, right? So the concept of the movie was that, you know, Jim Carrey, he was the, he was his, he was Dick in the movie and Jane T. Leone was his wife, right? It also starred uh, Alec Baldwin and Richard Jenkins. It was, again, a 2005 comedy. But the gist of it is that we talk about asset diversification. And this movie just drills it in and drills it home because what happens is Dick, who is the husband, he's working for this big corporation. And, you know, this day, particular day, he's called up to the 51st floor. And the 51st floor is where all the big boys are. So he knows, oh, my God, I have made it to the 51st floor, right? Big promotion, more money and all of that. But when he gets up there, what he finds is that the company is gone bankrupt and all of the big wigs are jumping in helicopters and burning up files and, and everything and really actually actually passing the buck on to him and making him the fall guy for the company. When, you know, one of the one of the lines in the movie says, Our savings, our pension, everything is gone. Man, talk about asset diversification, right? You can't put everything into anything. You, we must diversify. And that just drills in the diversification. And it also takes us back into talking about the bullet points that Dr. George Frazier gave on the uh, in our meeting. You know, he talked about one of the things, one of the answers to how do we increase our annual income? Okay, let's slow down and talk about that a little bit. How do we increase it? We increase it by becoming debt free. And how do we do that? Well, first of all, big checkpoint is don't add any more debt, right? It's so easy. And and for me, too, it's like one of the things that I struggle with is I'm very spontaneous. So if I go somewhere and I see something that is on sale, this is something my daughter's always talked about. I love a bargain, right? So we go go to a store and I see something on sale. And if it's at a real good, reasonable price, I'll buy all of the different colors. Like if it's a tanky, buy all the different colors, right? 
or if it's, you know, office supplies and you can get all these books or, or what have you, you can get them for 50 cents or what have you. So I'll buy up the, the, the shelf. But this is the thing. Great practice, however, if I use my credit card for it, am I really getting a deal? Because first of all, if I left it there, it's my credit card, if I'm not paying it off at the end of the month, it's still building more interest and it's compounding that interest on top of interest, right? But if I left it at the store, didn't spontaneously purchase, it could help me get out of debt sooner. Hmm, think about that. I'm not adding more debt to my credit card, which I'm not paying off at the end of the month, right? Pay it off at the end of the month so that it does not increase the compounding effect with the interest being put on the principal and then the principal being charged interest on the next month, right? So did I really get a bargain if I got it at a discount, but I put it on a credit card? And that is one of the things we talk about when we talk about debt becoming debt free. Also, the thing that I loved about the in the movie, uh, fun with Dick and Jane was that, you know, they started getting things repossessed because a company is gone and now he's taking a fall for it. So now he has all these things, issues that he's dealing with. Even their grass got repossessed, right? Again, when you are buying things on credit or, you know, things that we don't need, sometimes we, we, we must sacrifice in the long term in order to get what we want and be able to enjoy it in the long run, right? That's the thing. Sometimes we're trying to keep up with the Joneses or, you know, we feel like we have to have to have the latest name brand or we have to have what have you. And I'm not saying, again, there's anything wrong with that. But what I'm saying is that when you're working a plan to increase your annual income, getting rid of the debt is one. The other thing is that one of the tips of one of the things that he taught us was money, not in motion, is dying due to inflation. But something that triggered me, and that's why I put a couple checkpoints about things that you may know or even you may not, but things that like, bring it back to the forefront. Because again, keeping your goals in mind, uh, Stephen Covey talks about beginning with the end in mind. And if the goal is that is to become debt free, and you have a date on that so that you know how you're progressing toward it, then that means that we can't add more debt, even if it's just in the short term, right? Thinking about okay. Do I have the money to purchase this for cash or do I do I put this on a credit card and it increased that balance? So now the balance is hitting, getting hit, getting hit even harder with the interest. Right. So those are things that really, really think about. OK, because in our culture, we are. Is used. The culture is used to keep us poor. That means keep us pitting against one another. Who has the latest car? Who has the, you know, the, the the newest bag or the newest handbag? Who has the shoes? You know, the celebrities. We try to keep up with them, right? And it keeps on put, putting us deeper and deeper in quicksand, right? Because it's like standing on quicksand. If you're not getting out of debt, you're getting sucked in deeper and deeper. Money not in motion is dying due to inflation. I like to keep that in the forefront of our mind. Because if you if you just, just have it sitting, just say you have it sitting in a savings account, right? If it's sitting in a savings account, it's only getting, what, maybe 5% or something, you know? And a lot of the percentage or annual interest rates are annual interest rates. Some of them are daily, but most of them are annual interest rates, right? So if you're getting, a, you know, a, maybe 4 or 5% annually on, a, on an account, is that money in motion? No, that's not money in motion. That's money that's dying because inflation is increasing. So that dollar that you may have is shrinking. So with inflation, that dollar is worth now 75, then 50, then 25. So it's no longer worth that dollar. So you're losing your buying power, right? So these are things that help trigger us to do something different. Believe you me, I'm working on the same plans that I'm talking about because I want to get greater and greater and greater with my money because that helps in all areas. That's a shield and a defense. It helps us to not put everything in one pocket. That's that's the mistake that I made years and year, over and over again because I didn't know. I didn't have somebody that was going to teach me and educate me on what it is that I needed to do with my money. And really, I didn't have a good understanding of my money. And oftentimes, most of us don't, right? If you haven't been taught it, there's no shame in it. The shame is not going to get the education. It's also not surrounding yourself around people that have that higher education and money or that actually have demonstrated that they know what to do with their money, right? If we're around a bunch of girlfriends that believe in shopping all the time, that's not going to help us to increase our bottom line. And believe you me, I'm a shopper girl. I love to shop. I, I love fashion. I love fast cars. 
you know, uh, the decorating, you know, and things like that. However, I do have this now in mind, which I wish someone had have taught me years and years ago. I'd be further, right? But you start where you are, right? But the thing of it is, is surrounding yourself with like-minded people that are all that have the same type of aspirations that you have versus surrounding yourself with girlfriends that, you know, and that, that group is fine too, but also know that you need the group that's going to help you to, to, to elevate yourself because you don't want to be the smartest person in the room. If it is, you need to change the room, right? You want to make sure that you have people in that can pour into you. Now, everybody can pour, but are they willing to pour? Are they willing to tell you, girl, do you really need that other, that new verse? You know, even though, hey, that's your business if you're all in a group together and you've given each other permission, but do you really need those those new alligator shoes, right? Here's an event coming up. Do you really need to go to get a new outfit or can you pull out something in your closet, put the outfit together and boom, be fine without tomorrow coming and now you have more debt on your credit card because you didn't just shop in your own closet, right? And I know we like new things. We like to get new. Sometimes you can shake something up and make it new by the accessories that you put with it, right? These are things that we do in the meantime so that we can get where we want to go so that our money can now fund our other aspirations, dreams, and dreams and goals, right? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that savings account. Now, savings account is useful, right? You want to put six months worth of your reserves. So whatever it takes every month to run your household, to maintain your lifestyle, right? Your needs, not all your wants now. Whatever it takes. So you, sw- you should have six months worth of reserves. That's it. Point blank period. That's all the savings account is for. It's not for saving and growing money. That's not what it's for. So what you want to do is after you've done that, created that emergency fund, or even in the process, vet out companies like we have. You want to vet out companies that that can give you, again, that systematic cash flow, right? So you want to vet out those companies or those platforms or those smart assets is what they're called. You want to vet those out so that your, and what is a smart asset? A smart asset is assets that are increased exponentially in the shortest amount of time. That's a smart asset. So all the money that you have or all the other money, other than what you have in a six months reserve in a savings account, all other money should be invested to generate more money. And that more money, what are we doing? We're creating assets from assets, right? And as we're creating those assets from those assets, that's the secret sauce. Because now you're not living off of the principal because once the principal is gone, it's gone, right? You're not living off of the principal anymore. You're living off of the, the revenue that's generated from that smart asset, right? So you're living off of that. You're becoming debt-free, right? And your your you're living off that money, you're becoming debt free, and now you're increasing your annual income because you have less debt to pay, right? And then you're generating more revenue from these assets. And that's what I wanted to know. I wanted to understand what's the secret sauce. Somebody tell me the secret sauce. But there it is. That is the secret sauce. Okay. The other thing is that something that Dr. George Frazier talked about. He said, to gaze further, you must climb a ladder. No risk, no reward. I said, wow, isn't that powerful? Mark Twain says, worry is like paying a debt you don't owe. Mark Twain, right? Man, oh man, see, these are the moves that you want to make with your money so that your money is in motion. I didn't understand those concepts. So I didn't understand it. So I didn't get to teach this to my children. And now I'm able to do that because I'm so excited about being around people that will share this information and help you to get to your goals, help you to live the lifestyle that you desire to live, right? We talked about it the other day. Who do you meet on the journey? You meet you, the you that you're supposed to be with all the great potential. You meet you. All righty. Just wanted to just wanted to slide into your day with a bit of conversation to motivate you and encourage you and let you know that yes, God is a respecter of person. What one person can do, so can you. We can start off with just a little. Again, we talked about the five dollar pot. Five dollar, five dollar, five dollar, five dollar pot. Put those five dollars up. This is something when you start doing it, it takes 21 days to develop that habit. So now when a $5 bill comes across my path, I know that that $5 bill 
it's, it's hard to spend it now because the $5 is meant to save. You're going to say that, hey, you might graduate up to $10 bills. Hey, well, you may start off with $1 bills, with singles, whatever you start off with, a quarter, whatever you start off with. The point of it is to make sure that you start, right? You have to start somewhere. All righty? All righty. And I always want to go back to the Smart Money Circle Club. Group of people that are like-minded, going in the same direction, that have vetted out platforms that can assist you and help you to grow as well as we're going on the journey. You don't have to be based here in Michigan. We have partners that are based in Trinidad and Tobago. We have partners that are based in in in, in New York. Partners that are based in where's the other partners in Maryland. Partners that are based out of Florida. Partners that are based all over. So you do not have to be in Michigan to be a part of our Smart Money Circle. All righty. Don't forget to listen, learn, and leverage the information. Tell somebody about the channel. Like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Y'all stay fearless. Bye for now.